Some of the stuff that happened while I was Gonzies is out of this world. So let me go ahead and throw this one up. We'll jump into the first story here. Um, Republicans split on same-sex marriage bill, which faces uncertainty in the Senate. GOP senators are torn between their culturally conservative base, which is resistant to the idea, and a large majority of the country that favors legal gay marriage. So the House, to their credit, did something that everybody's been saying they should do for a while now, which is as soon as the, this recent slate of terrible Supreme Court decisions came down, everybody said, well, hold on. If all these good ideas like, you know, interracial marriage, gay marriage, um, right to choose, etc., if all of that is going to be slapped down by the Supreme Court and they say, no, the Constitution doesn't give you this right, well, then one of the ways around that is to codify that into law through Congress. So it, uh, it would have to get through the House, the Senate, and then the president would have to sign those bills. So, look, Joe Biden, for all of his flaws, if a bill gets to his desk that uh, codifies gay marriage, codifies right to choose, etc., he would sign that bill. So the House got their rear in gear for maybe the first time ever, and uh, they passed a couple bills. I'm going to do separate segments on both of these, but there was one on uh, gay marriage. Should we... Uh, make gay marriage legal apart from any constitutional issue? Should, should Congress codify gay marriage? And then the other one was right to contraception. So in the House, the gay marriage bill passed, but hold your horses, because I have some incredible numbers for you. So this article here in NBC News says, a bill to codify federal protections for same-sex marriage has passed the House, but Senate Republicans are agonizing, agonizing, over whether they should back it or allow it to pass. Well, excuse me, block it or allow it to pass. With Democrats seeking to portray Republicans as belonging to a retrograde and primitive party that wants to strip away modern rights, their decision could play a role in the midterm elections this fall. Some GOP strategists want the party to move past the issue by codifying protections. But that risks upsetting the cultural, conservative, uh, the cultural conservatives, which make up a significant portion of the party's base. Look at this, a Gallup poll released last month found that most Americans, 71%, favor legal same-sex marriage. 71%. Now, guys, it wasn't that long ago. In my lifetime, that number was under 50%. But it's been a, a massive victory that equal rights over time has become more and more popular. And now, I mean, that's a, that's a stunningly high number. 71% say they're in favor of gay marriage. That means it's virtually everybody on the left, every liberal, every almost every moderate or independent, and even, even according to some, so, some polls, most conservatives. Uh, I'm not sure it's like that in every poll, but there are a lot of conservatives who now are okay with gay marriage. Quote, the issue puts Republicans in an awkward spot. I love this, because now they're going to do like the politicking of this, as if that's at all relevant to the substantive and moral question at the heart of it. This issue puts Republicans in an awkward spot, said Jack Pitney, a professor of political science at Claremont McKenna College. Most Americans support same-sex marriage. Even a majority of self-identified Republicans support it. But evangelicals represent a huge share of GOP activists, and they still oppose it. More broadly, Republican activists dislike the idea of giving the Democrats a win, even on an issue where there is consensus in the general public. Soak that in for a second. Giving Democrats a win by supporting equal rights for gay people. That's how that's framed. Republicans are like, or a bunch of them, and I'll get to the numbers in a second, are like, ah, come on, we can't give them a win. Okay, how far would this go? How far could this go? If you said um, interracial marriage, we're going to vote to codify interracial marriage because the Supreme Court ruled there's, there's a right to interracial marriage. What if they roll that one back? So what if the House proposed a bill to legalize interracial marriage? What would happen? Would the Republicans say, I don't know, man, it's a controversial issue, and I don't want to give the Democrats a win. How far would they be willing to go? And look, the answer is a, a large chunk of the party, a majority, overwhelming majority of the party, in terms of the elected representatives, are like, there is no bottom to this barrel. I'll go as, as evil and primitive and retrograde and pathetic as you can possibly imagine. Um, for now, Democrats have locked down nearly half the Republican votes needed to break a 60-vote filibuster. 
So half of the Republican votes needed to break a 60 vote filibuster. So what does that mean? They have like five Republicans in the, in the Senate. Is that it? Or, or no, no, no. To break the filibuster. I, I think that's a higher number, right? I think it's a little higher. So maybe they have more than five. Don't quote me on that. I don't know why I'm blanking on what well, you need to break the filibuster. With many GOP senators dismissing the bill as unnecessary, unnecessary, and accusing Democrats of trying to weaponize an issue they say is settled. It's still unclear if the legislation will draw enough Republicans to become law. Okay. Well, hold on now. Democrats didn't bring this up. It was Clarence Thomas who brought it up specifically in his decision uh, when it came to Roe versus Wade. He said, hey, Obergefell next, dog. Put it up on the chopping block. They didn't decide this one right. Ted Cruz did a podcast recently. And in it, he said, Obergefell, which is the gay marriage, the right to gay marriage, he says that uh, Supreme Court decision was incorrect, and we need to throw that out. So this argument that, like, but why are the Democrats talking about this? It's nonsense. The Democrats are reacting to the right, going further and further to the right, and trying to take away something as basic as gay marriage. Uh, that, okay, more. Same-sex marriage remains legal, but the issue was reignited last month after the conservative-leaning court ended the right to abortion by overturning Roe v. Wade. In that decision, Justice Clarence Thomas, this is what I just referenced, a conservative icon, called on the court to also reconsider nationwide rights to gay marriage and contraception. The Respect for Marriage Act won 47 GOP votes in the House, including from self-described ultra-MAGA representative Elise Stefanik of New York and other conservative members. But 157 Republicans voted no. 157. Indicating the enduring power of a conservative base that feels threatened by the pace of cultural change. Only 47 Republicans agreed to equal rights. 157 said, I, will, I am against gay marriage. If I could, I would press a button and eliminate gay marriage in this country, which... I don't know. Would that be retroactive? Are all the people who are gay married now? It's like, poof, you're no longer married anymore. And there are, there are real life impacts of this. So, you know, there's all these, when you're married, that comes with a whole bunch of tax advantages and social security rights and inheritance rights and, you know, the ability to, to see them in their last moments if they're in the hospital and things of that nature. 157 Republicans said, no. No, I'm not for that. I'm against that. That's astonishing. Because look, everybody had this impression that like, well, that's a battle. It's been fought. It's been won. It's over. We're moving on now. And over time, virtually everybody in society is going to agree. Maybe at the very end, there's a holdout of 15% or something, some tiny number that doesn't agree. No, it turns out that the bigotry, and I do think it's fair to call this bigotry if you're against gay marriage, is just latent. It's barely underneath the surface. The second that they see an opportunity, it pops right back up. The thing that's astonishing about this is it's go talk to your average person on the street. This is not a controversial issue. This is a settled issue to your average Joe and Jane, whatever their political affiliation may be. The only people who remain to say, I'm against this, it is, it is fueled by evangelical Christianity, a fundamentalist strain of it that poisons the mind and makes you so socially conservative that you lose all grasp of common sense and basic fairness and justice. That's an astonishing of 157 Republicans voted no. 157. That's as extreme as it gets, man. It really is. And look, there's a debate about why exactly are they doing it? Are they true Kool-Aid drinking fundamentalists, all 157? Or are they just appeasing the very active and activist grassroots on the right that are fundamentalist Christian. And I don't know the answer to that. All I know is, um, at the end of the day, they vote the wrong way, and so it deserves to be massively condemned. In the Senate, the bill is co-sponsored by Republican Susan Collins of Maine, a centrist, and Rob Portman of Ohio, who is retiring and has supported same-sex marriage since 2013 after his son told him he was gay. Senator Tom Tillis, a North Carolina Republican, would vote for the bill, his office told NBC News, and Senator Ron Johnson, a Wisconsin Republican who faces a challenging re-election race, reluctantly said he'd vote for the bill. Even though I feel the Respect for Marriage Act is unnecessary, 
should have come before the Senate. I see no reason to oppose it, he said. Senator Lisa Murkowski, an Alaska Republican, said she's still reviewing the Respect for Marriage Act, uh, but noted that she supports same-sex marriage. But other Republicans like Senator Ted Cruz and John Cornyn, both of Texas, have sharply criticized the Supreme Court's decision that legalized same-sex marriage nationwide in the landmark Obergefell v. Hodges ruling in 2015. Cruz's office emphasized that he wasn't predicting it would be overturned. Senator Marco Rubio, Florida Republican, who also faces re-election this fall, will vote against the bill. A Rubio spokesperson said, adding that he believes it is unnecessary. There are other priorities, and this is an issue that he's always believed should be handled by the states. See, now this is, it's, it's very good that the Democrats brought this up for a number of reasons. It's very good that they did this because it, it gets the Republicans on the record and shows how out of lockstep they are with mainstream America. This is as extremist as it gets. And they don't have the dodge anymore, man, of like, well, it's not that I'm against gay marriage. I'm just against that the Supreme Court legalized it and said there's a constitutional right to it because obviously there's no constitutional right to it. That's the typical dodge. I'm like, I'm not saying anything about what my position is on gay marriage. All I'm saying is it's not in the Constitution and you need to acknowledge those facts. That's the standard Republican dodge. But now they're calling their bluff. And the Democrats are saying, okay, well, then let's have a vote on it. And you can support gay marriage apart from any questions of constitutionality. You can just say, yeah, we're... Gay marriage should be legal and then move on. And then they're balking. A lot of them are balking. Again, 157 Republicans in the House voted no on gay marriage at this late date. When everybody thought, hey, we've sort of settled the gay rights issue. We've moved on. And now the big discussion is trans rights. And that is in a place where, you know, gay marriage was, I don't know, maybe back circa the year 2000 or 1995 or something like that. That's what everybody thought. turns out, no. There is no moving forward for some segment of the population. Now, again, I will say, some polls show your average Republican is way more reasonable than your average elected Republican. But that also says something about the extent to which elected Republicans, the fringe has taken over. And this is something Chomsky pointed out going all the way back to the Tea Party wave. It's like, it's not really a political party anymore. It's a ragtag group of extremist misfits who have taken over the party establishment. And they'll roll that clock back as much as they possibly can. Whatever they can get away with, they're going to do. And it's not representative of a majority. It's not even representative of a majority of the average Joe voters in their own party. So, look, this should be highlighted because it is absolutely egregious. It's absolutely egregious. And um, any sort of tepid support or outright support for these politicians, people should know what they're signing on to. They're signing on to throwing out gay marriage, 157 of them in the House, and we'll see how many they end up getting in the Senate. And by the way, even if you do say, oh, this is a waste of time, it's already a settled issue. Okay, then vote yes and move on. That's it. Dunsies, we're done. Let's move along. But no, they're saying, oh, it's a settled issue, so now I'm going to vote no, or I'm going to yelp about how it's a settled issue. Well, it was a settled issue until Clarence Thomas said, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. We should revisit that one. So again, how far will it go? I, I truly do wonder if a, if a bill to codify interracial marriage came up, how many Republicans would vote against it? Sincere question. We had 157 vote against gay marriage. How many would vote against interracial marriage? 70? 80? The fringe has taken over in terms of the elected officials, and that's very clear. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.